Since Essential released their new colours on their new Essential phone, I thought now would be a good time to release my Essential phone video. So hey guys, my name is Ryan Thomas for Failtech, and should you still buy the Essential phone? Let's first talk about that hardware. This is probably the reason you'll be still buying an Essential phone. It is just an incredibly made, incredible feeling phone in the hand. It's got a use of polished ceramic and titanium. It's not actually glass on the back, that is polished ceramic, so no wireless charging here unfortunately, although you can use those special contacts, which I'll get onto a little bit later. It's very flush, it almost gives the resemblance of an old iPhone with flat sides around the outside and flat front and back with no protrusion, so no camera bumps on the front nor back, and the buttons are very minimal on the right hand side only, meaning that the power button is just below the volume up and down buttons, which are on the same side. Not everyone likes this approach to the button placement, but I really like it personally. And the fingerprint scanner on the back is a good balance of flush and not flush. So it's easier to find than say something on the original Pixel, but at the same time, it's not a huge gaping mix on the back of the phone. The design of the phone is one that I personally really like. I'm a fan of the more blocky design. It's got some cool rounded edges on either side, but the screen itself is flat and the back is flat. And the fact there's no camera bump means that it's harder to actually crack or scratch the camera element, the front elements on the two cameras when taking it in and out of your pocket. And of course, this is a head turner with a screen that fills out almost the front of the entire phone. I had so many people asking me what phone that is. Is that an iPhone 10? Is that a version of the iPhone 10? Of course it isn't, it's an Android phone. And it really did turn heads and it made me kind of look at the phone a little bit more than I usually would. I know this isn't really about the phone, but the unboxing experience was really good itself. I posted a bit of a montage to the unboxing experience and it's very posh. You've got some braided cables in the box, you get a really powerful power brick and everything is just laid out in such a way that it almost beats pretty much any other unboxing experience of any phone that I've ever looked at. I would have loved to have got this phone when it came out with those extra colours, especially that teal looking one that looks really cool, but the one I checked out was Black Moon and as you can see it's fairly stealthy, although I do believe you can get a stealthier version in the new colours. And it's actually quite refreshing to have a phone released in different colours other than black, silver and gold and pink gold. It's kind of just, it's nice to have a bit of a change. The speaker on the bottom is fairly tinny and I I did notice that when using the phone. It's just something that I want to note, and also you don't have a headphone jack, although you do get an included braided adapter. It's something that is a bit hit or miss, because when I do use headphones, I use wireless Sony headphones, which means that I don't really need a headphone jack on any of my devices, although the one time I did, I wanted to hook it up to a hi-fi at my uncle's house, and I couldn't because I didn't have that adapter with me, so it really does fit anyone's preference. Let's talk about the camera. This is one thing that a lot of people hated on, and it's a bit difficult to go about this because some people push the HDR plus Google Pixel app to their phone using an add-on which requires kind of flashing stuff and because I had a limited time between buying and selling the phone I didn't really have time to push new software and then revert it back to standard so I did use the stock camera app and I can say and I can confirm that it's just as bad as when it was released it's really, really buggy, and there's kind of a carousel where you switch modes from auto to portrait to manual to video, stuff like that, and it does get a bit caught up, and it doesn't quite go where you want it to go, and that's kind of frustrating. The camera images themselves, I believe, are actually pretty good. I was kind of impressed by the portrait mode. It's nothing like the OnePlus 5T or the Pixel or anything like that. And for a two camera setup, it didn't really do anything that I would expect more than a single camera setup to do. And that second portrait lens is of course the same focal length, just a monochrome one, supposedly giving you more detail and more low light and more HDR in your shots. I don't know if I could recommend that you buy this phone based on the camera because honestly it's about as good as a stock OnePlus 3T but the one thing that is really cool about it is that the front camera as in the selfie shooter does shoot UHD video. Now whether that's 1080p upscale to UHD or whether that is native UHD 4K it looks good and to be fair it's one of the better front facing cameras that I saw on a phone. Although I would admit that this phone specifically in Snapchat is really bad when it came to the actual image quality. There was so much noise and I know Android has a pretty bad Snapchat app 
but this was specifically quite bad on the Essential phone. I don't know if it was my unit, but it was pretty bad. Now, unfortunately on the main camera, you don't get optical image stabilization, you just get electronic image stabilization, and I feel like it's pretty good. Of course, those rear cameras are 13 megapixels with f1.9 glass, so the setup is fairly good off the bat. Of course, it shoots UHD video at 30 FPS and 720p at 120 FPS, and I found the video to be actually quite good. What I will say though is for that £400, you can get a pretty good condition Galaxy S7, which I'd say has a comparable to almost better camera, considering the low light is a lot better on that thing, and it has optical image stabilization. So really do look out for some good deals when it comes to the other used phones. The Essential phone, the camera app is just too buggy for me to recommend it as a camera phone, although there are other things that I will recommend it for. The display itself is very sharp, and of course it fills the top of the display and gives you a small bar along the bottom. Now the thing about that is that I like that bezel on the bottom. Not a lot of people do, but I like it because it gives you space for when you're typing when you're using the keyboard. Instead of just having a blank space where the screen would be, I just I kind of like it there. What I think would be really cool is if they could implement like a bottom firing mono speaker on the bottom. I think that would be really cool just right on the bottom of the display. Or maybe some off-screen buttons, I don't know. Kind of feels like wasted space, but I do like that space there. Now, like I said, the display is sharp. It's QHD or just slightly narrower than QHD, and it fills the display top to bottom and you get that little notch which I kind of like although it does lead to some software problems which I'll go back to a little bit later. The display itself is IPS meaning the colours are very accurate and yes it does mean that you don't get those deep blacks which is a real pain when it comes to viewing video because I can't seem to find a video app that fills the screen and you get pillar boxing on either side you can't pinch to zoom or anything into like a full screen but cropped app and it would be better if it was supported in any app let alone just YouTube or Netflix, it really wasn't supported, the notch, in any app that made a difference to the design. Like you might as well as just not have the notch and bring the bezel down a little bit because you don't get any extra screen real estate and it kind of makes the top notification bar just a little bit thicker than normal. So it doesn't really make up for anything or make a difference to the overall user experience. It just kind of looks pretty. And again, that's only subjective. The brightness range isn't huge either. It didn't get as dim as I wanted it to be, considering, you know, I use a OnePlus 3, so the OLED panel does get quite dim. It also doesn't get incredibly bright outside, and that can be a bit of a pain. Now, what about the software? In my opinion, the software and the screen are very related, and the software is the Essential Phone's one of its biggest strengths and also its biggest weaknesses. And what I mean by that is that it ships with basically stock Android. Like, it really is that good. It's bone stock pretty much and the only third party accessory or app that's integrated when you get open up the phone for the first time is the camera app which would have ironically been better if it was the stock camera app. but and there's a huge but here the problem is that the software is so laggy and unresponsive at times and it crashes and it's really like surreal because you think of stock android as being really light really smooth really elegant and this stock version of Android for some reason just bugged a lot on the software and it made the phone almost feel unusable at times. I might be exaggerating a little bit there, but there were times where you needed to use a swipe movement, such as swiping away a notification or unlocking the phone, and it just wouldn't register the full swipe. It would get like halfway and just stop, and it really frustrated me. And this wasn't just like once or twice, but it happened quite a few times when I was using the device. There's no real skin, like I said, on top of the user experience, meaning that you're getting a pretty stock version of Android, like I keep saying. Now, as soon as I opened the box, I got 8.0 Oreo update, so that was instant, and you probably will get some updates going into the future very close to the launch, due to the fact that Android, the, one of the creators of Android designed the phone and there are very close links and because it's stock, the developers don't really have to develop any new apps or any new skins to accommodate the new software, meaning that you should get, like I said, software updates going into the future. But that links to performance. So you get a Snapdragon 835 and four gigabytes of RAM. Now, some people might be saying, well, you want six gigs or eight gigs of RAM. I think four gigabytes of RAM is plenty at the moment. The Snapdragon 835 is one of the newest chips and will definitely last you probably an next five Five years going into the future considering you can put your custom software on to kind of fix those software bugs the hardware is good in my opinion and four gigabytes of RAM is more than enough to do pretty much anything so multitasking I really enjoyed multitasking on this phone even though it wasn't a stretch display and I tend to use multitasking more on this phone it's fast it's just not hugely reliable the 3040 milliamp hour is okay now I say okay because yes it's a 5.7 inch screen meaning that it's quite a big screen and to have a 3000 milliamp hour battery isn't that amazing but 
It's in a really small and really elegant design and because there aren't any protrusions that means you need more space inside the chassis for things like cameras. So I call 3040 milliamp hours okay. Now it lasted me a full day. In fact I got some pretty good battery life with this thing. I believe that's due to the fact that it's just such clean software and Doze is implemented really well meaning that you get better battery life. It's also got fast charging with a pretty substantial wall plug meaning that you're going to be able to top it up really quickly throughout the day and that's one of the best things about this phone. But considering I get a full day anyway I really didn't need to top it up during the day. The fingerprint scanner on the back is okay. There's a little bit of a delay. It's really not that fast but it's there. Of course you can get the 360 degree camera which I didn't get to check out unfortunately but apparently it's really good although it does require the stock camera app and I'm sure if you just implemented your own software and didn't necessarily use the essential stock ROM you could get some way better results than I personally got. My use case was fairly limited and I really did have to push a lot it was very intense when I was using the phone because I was testing it just that much and I believe that's probably what most phones crash at. But when it comes to the user experience like physically using the phone the display is bigger than the one on the OnePlus 3, but the phone feels so much smaller, and I believe that's why it would fit so many people's hands really well. And of course, with more and more people thinking that phones are a fashion statement, which they are kind of becoming, an essential phone is definitely a really good addition to a swanky looking outfit. And no, I'm not into my fashion. I'm wearing a two pound Primark t-shirt. So my overall thoughts, the essential phone has some really cool features such as that 4K UHD front facing camera. That's pretty sick. The screen that goes all the way into the corners with those rounded edges. It's pretty cool. The pretty damn awesome performance specifications and the stock clean software. So for 400 to 450 pounds, I will recommend the essential phone to you. And I still think that it will be good going into the future. And for those of you who may be complaining that you can get a OnePlus 5T cheaper, here in the UK, an essential phone costs between 400 and 450 pounds and a OnePlus 5T costs between 489 and 550 pounds. So it's a lot more expensive to go with the OnePlus 5T. But of course in the US it's probably quite different. So that's it from me guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much Ross for supporting me on Patreon. Please do like, dislike, comment, subscribe and tell me your thoughts again in the comments and follow me on social. It really helps me out and hopefully we can start a conversation there as well. Anyway, I've been Ryan Thomas for Failtech and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.